Hello everybody, I'm Pei Zhuo Li, and I will present our work Ganimator, Neural Motion Synthesis from a Single Sequence. This is a joint work with Kfir Aberman, Zihan Zhang, Rana Hanoka, and Olga Sorkin Hochnun. As we all have witnessed, data-driven approaches for character animation have demonstrated unprecedented success in many analysis and synthesis tasks including interactive control, style transfer, crop simulation, and keyframe interpolation. With no doubt, the datasets are a very important part of the success. And of course, building a dataset for motion is extremely difficult. The first thing is the capturing process is tedious and inconvenient. One needs to wear the motion capture suit and perform the motion in a room surrounded by cameras. As a consequence, for example, only specifically trained animals like dogs may be captured by the existing system, and it is almost impossible to capture most creatures like crab or a snake. And in general, the raw data acquired from capturing system can be noisy and requires manual intervention for achieving high quality result. Such a post-processing is expensive and very labor intensive. To overcome the lack of dataset, we present Ganymater, a generative model that learns to synthesize novel motions from a single short motion sequence. Ganymators generates motions that resemble the core elements of the original motion, while simultaneously synthesizing novel and diverse movements. Now, let's briefly review some existing literature. Motion Texture clusters a large training dataset into Textons, which is a linear dynamic system that captures local variation. It also models the transition probability between Textons. Though the goal resembles ours, it's still a data-hungry statistical model and does not fit in our single motion setting. A neural network-based approach, ACRNN, tackles a similar problems of novel motion synthesis and creatively addresses the error accumulation issue for long-term generation. However, this method is also meant to be trained on large dataset. Shaham and colleagues propose to learn generating random samples from a single image named Singan. The model is trained in a course to find fashion and based on so-called patch discriminator. We take the inspiration from this work to our Ganymator. So overall, Ganymator leverages information contained within a single motion sequence over multiple scales and time. We use a multi-scale hierarchical generative neural network, where each level is responsible for learning the distribution of temporal patches at a different resolution. Here we can take a closer look at the architecture of Ganymator. Starting with a random noise that synthesizes a coarse motion sequence through a generative network, our framework progressively upsamples the motion until it reaches to the finest temporal resolution. Each level, except for the first level, let's take in level 3 as an example, receives the output of the previous level plus a random noise as input. Then output an upsampled version of the input sequence. More specifically, we use such a globe block in each level. The input motion first goes through an upsample operator. Since it's only a simple linear upsample, the result is a blurred motion, similar to what one will get with a bilinear upsampling for an image. Then, we add a random noise to control the variation of the generated result. Here we use a skip connection such that the convolutional network can focus on the missing high frequency details and relieved from regenerating the input. During the training time, the high resolution result is then fed to a patch style discriminator, which means the discriminator decides if each patch instead of the whole image is fake or real. 
During training time, we first use adversarial laws. As mentioned before, the discriminators are patch style, and the discriminator in each level takes care of different level of details, from left to right in a course to fine order. Now remember that the noise is here for variations, but to provide better quality and stabilize the training, we enforce the network to reconstruct the training motion when a fixed noise is given and at the first level and zero noises are given at the other levels using reconstruction laws. It can be seen that the reconstruction laws helps to stabilize the generated result. With the full approach, there are less jittering artifacts. Now if we take a closer look, we can see that there is almost no foot sliding artifacts. To achieve such good quality on foot contact, in addition to the joint rotation and global velocity, we also append binary foot contact labels for the feet joints to be part of the animation representation. So they are also predicted by the network, so the foot sliding artifacts can be fixed in a post process. Note that the contact labels can actually be retrieved from the ground truth by setting a threshold for the corresponding joint's velocity. However, the correlation between contact labels and the animation is only learned implicitly by the discriminator, and it's not enough. As can be seen in this example, Fixing foot sliding with no consistency contact labels causes some very unnatural sudden change. We then introducing the contact consistency laws to enforce the generated foot velocity close to zero when the predicted contact label is enabled. And of course, one stands for contact and zero stands for no contact. Here we show the effectiveness of contact consistency laws. It helps to avoid the sudden change artifacts and greatly increase the perceptive quality of our result. Now let's enjoy some more results on the crab rave. Since our model requires only one training example, we can simulate a diverse crowd of hexapod crab instead of just a human, like most existing works. This can also be used to augment data for training purposes. Here we compare our generated result to classic and state-of-the-art techniques that can use a single input sequence. We can see that our method generates high-quality motions with global structure variations, while other methods may collapse into a static pose or generate unnatural transitions with poor foot contact. There can be many interesting applications with our framework. One example is style transfer. In this application, we train our network with the style input, which is the proud walk in the example video. By conditioning the courses level in our framework with the content input sequence, the output maintains the course content of the input but applies the high frequencies embedded in the network, resulting in a motion style transfer framework with comparable qualities to state-of-the-art results trained on large datasets. A similar technique can be used in keyframe editing by editing a couple of keyframes at the course level and passing them to the network. We can obtain a seamless and natural sequence without the need for interpolation that may lead to undesired artifacts. We can also mix motions from two different sequences and generate a single sequence that fuses their content.
Here we visualize the skeleton animation of our generated result in blue and its nearest neighbor in gray. We see that different patches in our generated sequence contain motions from both the training sequences, showing that our method can naturally fuse the training motions. Now, let's go back to our architecture, and we will show that with some minor modifications, our framework can support conditional generation. When we want to conditionally generate the animation given the global trajectory of the animation, we can exploit the power of discriminator by concatenating the user-specified global trajectory to generated rotations and the network will learn how to produce the animation complying with the given constraints. Here we demonstrate that we can control the global motion of the character. Here we compare our control mo model to the state-of-the-art technique of Holden and colleagues. It can be seen that our outputs provide comparable quality while our network uses less than 1% of the data. Our method can also control the trajectory of more complicated skeletons, such as a hexapod. Now we show how different receptive fields affect our results. With a wide receptive field, the output overfits original sequence, and with a smaller one, the transitions may be unnatural. Conditional generation is particularly interesting for interactive applications such as video games where the motion of the character needs to be generated online in accordance to joysticks controller inputs, for example. Here we demonstrate the process for exploiting a pre-trained conditional generation framework for such interactive application. Our conditional generation framework can be conceptually simplified as a multi-layer convolutional generator that takes user-specified constraints. When new constraints are given, we concatenate them with the existing constraints and the noise as input for the generator. In the generated result, the frames that are outside of the receptive field of the new constraints remain the same. The frames within the receptive field of new constraints are changed and are used to create smooth trans transition between existing and new constraints. The frames complying with new constraints are newly generated. During a generation, we only need to keep the frames within the receptive field of the dark sign area. This is allow us to achieve interactive generation by a simple loop. We then develop several metrics to measure the effectiveness of our model. The first one is coverage, which measures how much of the training animation can be generated in the, in the generated result and to show that there is no model collapse in our model. More specifically, for a given window in the training animation with lengths of 30 frames, we look for its nearest neighbor in the generated animation and test if the distance is less than a given threshold. If so, the window is marked as covered, and the coverage measures the percentage of all possible windows marked as covered in the training animation. To measure the diversity in local frames, for a given window in the generated animation with length 15, we look for its nearest neighbor in the training. We then use the average of nearest neighbor as a measurement of local diversity. To show the effectiveness of generating variation in global structure, we propose to measure the global diversity in this way. 
The generated animation is first split into several windows, where each window is at least 30 frames. Then, as an example, we find the nearest neighbor of the third segment, marked by green. This is also similar for other windows. We define the global diversity of the generated result to be the smallest average nearest distance among all possible segmentations. The intuition behind this is when large global structure variation is presented, it is difficult to find a close nearest neighbor for large window size. Here we evaluate our method quantitatively with the proposed metrics. Since we use the nearest neighbor cost against the training sequence to measure diversity, high diversity score does not necessarily imply plausible results. For example, motion texture creates unnatural transitions that are not part of the training sequence, and ACRNN converges to a pose that does not exist in the training sequence. Both of them lead to a high diversity score. It can be seen that ACRNN has limited coverage due to its convergence to a static pose, while our method generates motions that covers the training sequence well. Motion texture trend as a single text and overface to the training sequence, creating little variation on both local and global scale. Meanwhile, our model strikes a good balance between generating plausible motions and maintaining diversity. Though we can deal with foot contact in most cases, when the contact with floor involves geometry of shape, for example, the tail of the snake, our method cannot detect it properly, and it leads to floating and penetration problem. So, I would like to wrap up this talk and to mention that we presented a generative model that learns from a single sequence, which is very practical when it comes to non-humanoid skeleton as the dataset is difficult to acquire. Based on our model, we propose many interesting applications that only a single input sequence is required, but the quality is comparable to some state-of-the-art work built upon a huge dataset. In order to evaluate our model, we also introduced several metrics for the novel motion synthesis task that can be used for further researches. An interesting direction for future work would be to use a more general contact model including self-contact and geometric contact to cope with the related artifacts and possibly to introduce ability of interaction with complex environment. It would also be interesting to add physically based prior to the framework as it has been demonstrated that such a prior can be used in many motion synthesis tasks. Hope you enjoyed this talk and see you at the live session. Bye bye.